Hello, everybody, and welcome to our presentation on cementitious coatings. Uh, my name is David Huggins. I'm the sales manager for Forest Coatings. Uh, Forest Coatings is an applicator and distributor and supplier of Turaco Group finishing materials based out of Sweden. And uh, we're here to focus on mixing procedures and substrate preparation in order for our repairs to work. It uh, doesn't matter how good the material is if you haven't prep the surface properly and, and mixed it properly, uh, you're probably going to have a, uh, a short-term repair. Um, I'd like to welcome, I've got friends, we've got customers, uh, we've got our partner from uh, Turaco, China here with us, Steve Edgel in the back. Um, all, all our materials are green, they're easy to use. Uh, we don't have any admixtures at the moment, but we'll be uh, working on that. So. Small batch mixing is what we do. Uh, some of our customers include Brookfield Asset Management, TTC, Timber Creek Asset Management, Verity Alliance Restoration, uh, New Site Waterproofing, who's here, and Bothwell Accurate, among others. Uh, our website has lots of projects that we've done. Uh, if you have any questions, we'll hopefully have some time at the end. If not, we're in booth 1005. We welcome you to visit us there, or right after the show, uh, we'd be happy to answer questions and get our emails. We're eager to talk to architects, engineers, spec writers, contractors, and uh, asset owners to understand life cycle around repairs because we see a, a big industry out there. Uh, I'm going to pass it over to Bill and Nathan. They're our application specialists, and they're going to run you through uh, a typical situation we face. Thank you. Hi. How are you all doing? I trust everyone's having a good time at the show? All right. As Dave said, we're going to run through a typical situation, but you know what? There never is a typical situation when it comes to repair. Okay? Before we can do any of the mixing and application on this, the first thing you have to do is prepare the substrate that you're going to be dealing with. Now, we do a lot of underground garages. We've done elevator pits. We've done foundations and houses. They're all different. They all have little secrets to hide. When you're looking at it, you're basically going to be looking at the, the floor, the ceiling, and the wall, and the joints going around, and the corners. That's the first thing you've got to see. Next thing you're going to look at is all the fine cracks going around. What do they have to hide, right? Well, initially when we prep, uh, we're looking at a crack, we're going to chip it out, right? We want to get about an inch deep, an inch wide, so we can put in our water plug and get a good seal. Do we avoid cracks and, and let look, cracks go? No. Why? Because like I said, cracks have things to hide, not Doritos. I'm talking chairs. These little things came out of the cracks in the ceiling. Little fine crack, you could hardly, not even an eighth of an inch wide, were hiding these. Now what happens is, the water coming from a filled membrane above is going to go along the rebar, out through the crack, down onto the floor, or onto the car, or into the house, whatever, right? So we're going to chip all of those out. I'm going to use a comb bit here usually. That works pretty handy for getting at that. But after we've done that, if we're doing individual cracks in the house, you can't stop there. You also got to be able to chip the sides of the crack to prepare the substrate. If you don't prepare your substrate, the job is already failed before you begin, okay? What do we use for that? Well, we will hit it with a bushing tool. The very important thing is to get off the foreign substances, oils, loose dirt, paint, what have you, okay? Done that, we chip it out, clear it. Then we're going to hit it with the water hose, get all the loose debris off, right? Now, what we have here, as I mentioned, we have us a, a typical crack, non-typical, but in this case, a crack. But what we're going to do is we're going to make this a live leak. Live leak, in other words, there's water coming in. We got to stop that before we can go on to the next process, okay? Nate is going to mix up some material here because he discovered this live leak. He better hurry up or the house is going to flood. What he's mixing up is our uh, water plug. He's going to use there about 500 milliliters of the water plug, about 200 milliliters of water. This stuff is fast acting. It hardens in two minutes. In one month, it's got a 36 MPA rating, so it's very strong. You don't have much time to work with it, so we mix it up in tiny batches. You can use this stuff when the water is getting out. You could even use it underwater if you want. 
If there's something underwater, I'd send Nate down to deal with it because I hate swimming. You ready to go? All right, so all of a sudden we have our leak coming through. There you can see the water coming. Nate's mixed up the product. Now this stuff will dry varying on the ambient temperature. If it's really warm, it dries a lot quicker. Do He's going to plug it in there, he's going to hold it into place. You can, as you can see, there's a lot of water coming in there. This person has a lot of troubles. How many people have that in their foundation? Water coming in, you don't know what to do about it, right? Well, that one seems to be stopping up. He's going to press it in there and make sure it's pressed and nice and firm because we want to get a good bomb on all surfaces. And then after he's done that, he still has a little bit of time to scrape off the access. Not much, mind you. Looks pretty good. But you know, as all things are, we never ever, ever get it all cured in one time because, you know, the leaks come in, there's a big rainstorm, whatever, we're getting more water coming in. Nate's really got to work hard now. When this stuff is drying or curing, it actually kicks off some heat, right? Right now we got, what is that there, 20 degrees Celsius. We'll see what happens in a minute or two. It should get a little warmer than that. How you doing? You ready there? <laughs> Sure, sorry, I can do that. I thought everybody liked to look at me. <laughs> As I said, sometimes with this stuff, depending on the ambient temperature, it reacts differently. Sometimes you'll mix it, it'll be quick. Other times you've got to wait a minute or two. You just gently stir it. But when it starts to react, it's quick. All right, let's go for a big leak. <laughs> Same procedure, mix up your compound, push it into the hole, hold it into place for a minute. Now, as you can see, this is pretty convenient though. Small hole, one batch does all, right? What happens if you have something a lot bigger than that? It's no problem. All you would do is mix up little batches at a time. You put one in the hole, and you just build upon that, right, until you've got the leak stopped. I've done uh, repairs where we've done uh, storm drain pipes coming in that were this big around, and I had it chipped out about like that, about yay deep. It took um, 15 kg of this material to fill it, but I just constantly kept putting the stuff in. Because it dries so quickly, you don't have to wait around. Now, we got a little present here. I wouldn't eat it. I'm going to wait a second here. This is actually going to start to cure up and harden. When it hardens, it's going to start giving off the heat that I've been talking about. I'd also like to mention, which I failed to do at the beginning, Nate's wearing his personal protection equipment. In this case, he's got his covers all on so he doesn't mess himself up. He's wearing a mask. He's got his eye goggles on. This is a green product, but we still respect safety and watch for the dust from the material when you're mixing it up, right? And he's got his uh, safety boots on in case someone comes by and steps on him when we drop this thing on his toe, right? Okay. 
If you don't mind a little bit of dust, this is actually starting to harden up. You can pass it around. It'll, by the time it gets over there, it should be white hot. Now, we look at this. We stopped all our live leaks in this certain area. We're going to move on to the next part. The next part is using the crystalline. I'm sure you've all heard of crystalline by now. You've been walking around talking to people. Crystalline is a product that reacts with the wet components in the concrete, especially lime. What it does is it's going to build up some crystals inside and fill the capillaries. All right? The beauty about the crystalline is when you put it on, it migrates into the concrete and it keeps going. If it's wet, it'll keep going through that and it won't stop until it gets through to the other side of the concrete. What we're going to do in this, we're going to coat this whole thing with it. Normally when we put this stuff on, we put two coats and then we're going to put something on to keep the hydration in because typically with crystalline, you have to keep it hydrated for seven days, right? You're spraying it or putting a poly on. Well, we don't want to do that because we want to get in there and we want to get out. Can't be hand sitting around watching crystalline. So what we do is we put on our weather coat. Our weather coat is a um, powder resin based product such as this that we're going to coat over the crystalline after it's surface saturated dry. It dries in about two hours, we can leave. What happens with a weather coat is it's breathable. It's going to allow the, water, the air to get up but not the water vapors. It's going to keep the crystalline hydrated. It needs to be hydrated about seven days, so this will do that. And then the crystalline starts to do its job. One thing about crystalline is it's always working. You get freeze thaw effects in the spring, you get a lot of water coming in, leaks. It hits the crystalline that's now in the, the foundation or into that block. It reacts, starts making more crystals. You get August, all of a sudden it's dry, there's no water. What happens to the crystalline? It goes dormant. But it's still there. It's not deteriorating, it's just dormant. You get another uh, wet cycle coming, more water, the water table is a lot higher. It hits that crystalline that's impregnated in the block. It reactivates and it's going to work again. This stuff never stops working. It's always there. By the time everything's said and done, this crystalline will have waterproofed your entire foundation and block wall, it doesn't matter. But why would you put a water coating on that you have to rely on the film to have it so it doesn't delaminate when you can use something like this that's going to make your whole structure waterproof, right? As you see here, Nate spraying, putting this on. We put this on, we either use a brush or a roller. We don't spray it on because it's a reactive product. We don't have much time to work with it, about an hour. And if you're using spray equipment, it's not really conducive because it's going to clog up your gun. But as you can see, it brushes on fairly easy. He is going to brush on one coat one way, and then he would let this dry to surface saturated dry, and then he would put a coat on the other way. We would let that dry again, and then we would put on a coat of weather coat. Due to time constraints here, unfortunately, we won't be able to put a second coat of crystalline on or the weather coat. But if you come over to the booth later, we can explain the process to you. I also have set up at the booth two blocks that show the migration process of the crystalline, which is pretty interesting if you haven't already seen it. I don't know. I think that covers it. Anybody have any questions? Yes. The first product, that's our water plug that we're using. Yep. And it's, uh, it's a water-based product, as you can see. I don't know. Did you see the little ball coming around? Did it get hot, nice and hot? Eh? <laughs> yes. The lifespan of this stuff is the lifespan of the structure. Once the crystalline gets into that structure, it's there to stay. It never stops working, right? And in time, like I said, it's going to impregnate the entire structure so there will be no water will ever get back in again, unless you have an earthquake and a big crack or something. Yes? It doesn't make it. With the concrete, we, uh, you should have it should be uh, cured for seven days. We've done work with concrete where we've, we've gone into and done the St. Michael's Cathedral. 
We're doing waterproofing in there, and we've had both cases. I've actually done uh, crystalline on a new pour on the foundation wall, and right above it was a stone wall that had been constructed in 1840. So there's a vast range of substrate there. It doesn't matter. It pregnates the same. Half, seven days after the pour, you can apply the crystalline. Any other... Uh, Excuse me? It's mixed like a cement. It's actually something like a, what you'd call like a hydraulic cement, but it reacts a lot quicker. While I'm here, actually, I got this here. I should show you these. Everybody familiar with what these are? This would be like the chair. This is the rebar, right? I've chipped a few of these out, actually, because they're right on the surface. Found one of these in the wall, or the ceiling, I should say. Find a lot of these. This is like the separators to keep the forms apart. Now you notice these in the ceilings. You know, when you're looking at a job and, you're not, and you don't see an actual crack, you actually might see paint discolored. That's a good sign that there could be one of these guys hiding underneath it, right? You never know. That's why nothing is typical when you're doing these applications. You never know what you're going to come across. Every job is different. I guess. Uh, maybe I'll welcome uh, Steve Edgel up from Taraco Group, uh, and he can tell, give you a few words about our uh, supplier uh, based in Sweden, and uh, he runs the manufacturing facility in China. And he can he can tell you a little bit about Taraco Group and what Good stuff. Uh, what they're up to. Okay. Good stuff. Yep. Hello, everybody. Yes, uh, Taraco Group was started roughly 30 years ago in Sweden and Jordan in the Middle East. Since then, we've expanded to 18 manufacturing plants worldwide and 32 sales offices. When we were looking at the Canadian market, we were looking for a partner we could trust that understood the engineering side of waterproofing. And we teamed up with Forest Coatings and we've introduced these products. And as well as Canada, we sell all over the world. I'm based in China where we have two factories currently. Uh, any questions about Taraco? It's We've always been a green company since we began. We've never produced anything using solvent or environmentally unfriendly materials. It was always the ethos of the company to be a green company, and these products follow that ideal. Okay, Dave. Thank you, Steve. Um, so. The other thing we're looking for is is to understand more uh, in the engineering and architect and specifier community around uh, uh, cementitious coatings and be we we are not engineers. Uh, we're having a lot of performance-based success out in the market, uh, but we want to uh, work with leading architects, engineers, spec writers, and contractors. Uh, we know the, there's a big market out there for contractors to use this material. Um, I'm getting heavily involved with the uh, International Concrete Restoration Institute uh, as well as uh, American Concrete Institute who have done a great job around best practices for surface prep and material selection. Uh, so you'll be uh, hearing a lot about that uh, over the coming year. Um, and <laughs> so we're our, our office and warehouse is in Burlington. Uh, I've got an office downtown. We've actually done uh, probably seven or eight different projects within a 20-minute walk of here, including track level at Union Station for TTC, uh, head wall at Union Station for Elliston and TTC, uh, parking garage in Brookfield Place uh, with Verity Alliance and Engineering Link. Uh, we've got a uh, host of success, su successful projects out there. Uh, we did an elevator pit for TTC at Young and Finch. Um, and a lot of our success right now is where there's you can't dig on the outside and there's high hydrostatic pressure. Um, so there's not many alternatives. 
It's a lot easier for us to work where there's an active leak because usually you need to solve it yesterday. Uh, but we are going to get in, go down the path of new construction and, and positive side waterproofing as well. Uh, any other questions out there? Okay, thank you for attending. We're in booth 1005. We'll be there for the rest of the show and tomorrow. Uh, Bill, Nathan, myself, our GM, Charlie, will be there along with Steve. And uh, thank you for coming. Thank you.